Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you guys today on Zoom and catching up with you about your Memorial Day weekend. It seems like our weather's finally warm and I know we got some rain in our future, but usually when it's warm and it rains, it's not as bad as when it's cold. Maybe you can even play in the rain a little bit or something. I think we're getting into summer here, which is exciting. So we only have a few days left of school, a couple more weeks to go. You guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. I'm so proud of you guys. And without further ado, we're back with the Boxcar Children and the Hot Air Balloon Mystery, Chapter 10, Grounded. Remember, Matt and Sky's ad didn't run, and we're at the ballooning launch site here, and there's a lot of drama going on coming into Chapter 10, Grounded. Sky's jaw dropped. We never canceled the ad, she told Hollis. Well, someone did, Hollis said. When, Matt asked. Last night, my assistant took the phone message. The Aldens exchanged glances. Each of them was remembering what Benny had overheard. Drop it, Barbara had said. Had she phoned the newspaper to cancel the ad? It was so late. I had nothing to fill the space, Hollis was saying. The only thing I could do was enlarge the landings in ad. Don Fister rushed up to them. Are we going to fly today or not, he asked. Yes, yes, Guy answered. Is everyone ready? We're all waiting for you, he said. She handed him another map. Do you have a compass, she asked. He nodded. I borrowed one. The morning's event was a time-distance race. Each pilot and crew would begin to inflate their balloon on cue. They would then lift off and go as far as possible and land within an hour's time. Whoever went the farthest would win. Sky and Matt were going to participate in this event. Matt took Sky's arm. Let's get ready, he said, and led her and the Aldens to their spot on the field. I'm crew chief, Matt told the Aldens. Just follow my orders. With the Aldens' help, Sky and Matt spread out their red, white, and blue nylon covering. Other members of the crew grabbed propane tanks and secured them in the side of the basket. They tipped the basket on its side and placed the burner and, in and instruments. Next, they sorted out the cables and ropes and attached them to the proper places. Matt started the fan. He told everyone to grab hold of the lines and steady the balloon. They promptly obeyed. Benny, step to one side. You're in the way of the fan, Sky instructed. The fan had whipped Benny's hair into a mass of untidy curls. It looks like you combed your hair with an egg beater, Henry teased. Busy with his assigned job, Benny ignored him. Sky checked the inside of the balloon. It looks okay, she said. Now let's give it some heat. She reached for the blast valve. Her hand stopped in midair. Turn off the fan, she shouted. Matt did so. What's wrong, he asked. One of the propane tanks is missing, Sky told him. Matt looked inside the basket. They were all out here earlier. I lined up all the equipment myself. Sky threw up her hands. We can't go up. Benny glanced at the tanks. They were big. They must hold lots of propane gas. Can't you go up with what you have? Skye shook her head. It'd be taking a chance, she explained, and a good pilot doesn't take chances. Can't you get another take, Violet asked. Matt shook his head. No time, he said. Pete had already announced the start of the race over the loudspeaker. Some of the balloons had left the ground. Mary, Hollis, and Pete came over to see what was going on. Henry told them what had happened. Oh my, more trouble, Mary commented. She sounded as though she had expected it. Well, I'm certainly not going to sit here feeling sorry for myself, Skye said. She turned to Pete. Does everyone have a chase crew? I'm it for Don, he answered. He did so much complaining, most of his crew quit. All right, Skye said. We'll go with you. Take our van, Matt suggested. There's more room. Let's move, Pete urged. Don's already airborne. Skye, Matt, Pete, and the Aldens dashed for the van. Matt climbed in the driver's side. Sky handed Benny and Jesse maps. You be the navigator, she said. The rest of us will keep Don in sight. That was easier said than done. Don's yellow, orange, and green balloon had disappeared now and then behind the tree line, over a ridge. No one spoke as the van moved up one country road and down another periodically. The walkie-talkie 
Pete held squawked. Don's voice would come through, broken by static. Benny followed their course on the map. This is hard, he said. Jesse compared her readings with his. What's hard is that we're down here and he's up there, but it's exciting, Sue Lee commented. Everyone agreed with that. The hour's almost up, Violet said, looking at her watch. I wonder whose balloon went the farthest, Benny asked. Next, Don's voice came over the walkie-talkie and said he had found a landing spot and soon would come down. Jesse and Benny located the spot on the map and directed Matt toward it. Near the landing site, Matt eased the van to the side of the road and stopped. Everybody out, Sky directed. They piled out of the van and ran up the embankment across an open field. Above them, Don was slowly coming down. He threw out a tow rope. Matt grabbed it. The basket touched down. The others grabbed the ropes on the side. The basket bounced and toppled. Don crawled out smiling. You're looking at a winner, he said confidently. He didn't seem a bit surprised to see Sky and Matt. How could he possibly know that they had not gone up in their own balloon? They packed up the balloon and headed back to the field to see how the other balloonists had done. Sure enough, Don was the winner. He had flown several miles beyond Brad Golder, who came in second. The Aldens overheard Brad complain to Sky. Don should be disqualified from the next event, he said. He wins everything. Sky shrugged. He is an excellent balloonist. Pete brought the picnic basket to the Aldens. I thought you might be hungry after that chase, he told them. Are we ever, Benny said. Are you going to eat with us, Jesse asked. Pete shook his head. I'm going to go back to the inn to see if Barbara needs help with anything. I'll see you later. The children headed for the oak tree. I wonder if Don would have won if Sky and Matt had been in the race, Henry commented. And why wasn't he surprised to see Matt and Sky when they were supposed to be in the race, Violet asked. Maybe he was so excited about winning he didn't notice, Suli suggested. Do you think Don took the propane tank, Jesse asked. Henry shrugged. I don't know. He had more reason than Pete or Barbara, Violet said. And he could have done the other things, Suli added. But what about Skye's ad, Benny asked. Barbara was the one who c called Mr. McKnight. Here they are having their picnic. The Aldens, all four of them. We don't know that for sure, Benny, Jesse said. She could have been phoning anybody. I think Pete did it, Benny said. Pete and Barbara, or maybe Barbara and Mary. Henry let out a surprised breath. Barbara and Mary? They don't even like each other. Benny shrugged. Maybe they're just pretending. Violet didn't think so. They don't like each other, that's for sure. Jesse opened the picnic basket. Look at this. She pulled out a small blue tablecloth. And look here. Benny extracted a cup. It's cracked like mine. It isn't cracked like mine, but it's pink. Sue Lee said, how nice of Barbara. She's really thoughtful, Violet said. Too thoughtful to be mixed up in all this, Henry decided. Benny nodded. I guess you're right, he said. All right, that's the end of our chapter. The next one is called The Confession. Oh, man. All right. So, I think I have my prediction, but I'd love to hear yours. Who do you guys think is mixed up in all this? Do you think it's Don Fister? I know some of you have told me Don Fister. Some have told me Pete. Maybe it's multiple people. Maybe Don Fister wanted to win the ballooning, but some of the townspeople are in on messing the business up. I don't know. I'm. This one I don't think is quite as easy to figure out as the Panther mystery, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll wait and see. I'll let you know at the end if I'm on the right track or not when we find out who's been messing with stuff. All right, guys. I look forward to seeing you today. I look forward to hearing from you. Keep up the hard work. We only got a couple more weeks to go. You guys got this. All right. I'm proud of all you guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.